സൂര്യപ്രകാശ് ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ് ഹലോ സൂര്യപ്രകാശ് so can you tell me what what you have learned okay today let me share my screen yeah is am i audible to everyone yes bro yeah shankar you are audible yeah first uh, like uh, let me ask like uh, the agenda is to like uh, by end of this month max to max at max i am telling end of this month, okay everyone should get place i am not uh, because someone uh, majority of the people, some people have not joined right yesterday that is the reason so on every day some or the other things task assignments everything need to be completed on a daily note and if you need some help on saturday and sunday or on daily note like if if you need i'll try to take the class or ma'am will try to take the class on every day okay but uh, the point is something you need to revise that and we will be also not getting interest okay when whenever you are trying to ask okay because like pooja especially okay you are there right that is the only reason i'm tra- trying to talk in english <clears throat> okay from morning except this time okay except 11 uh, something uh, i don't know when okay you can have complete day classes okay i don't mind okay complete day you can have the classes whatever the doubt you have okay with respect to docker and kubernetes okay all of these things okay uh, anything on daily note you need to alternate days i told like we will have the mock interviews right uh so let me start okay every day saturday sunday not every any time you can call like over the slack you can call guys over the slack to the if it is ma'am uh, because i don't want to like already some of the things happened uh with respect to other candidates so i just don't want to tell yeah so on slack you can call you i guess hope everyone is there in the slack and uh, from tomorrow we'll try to see on a very fast note it is this is kind of a revision itself right daily we'll try to have class and mock everything okay i guess like jenkins why do we use jenkins and docker i just want to tell once again maven okay sonar cube and nexus jfrog docker okay docker i have written kubernetes yeah these were enough ansible and uh, like terraform okay all these things we'll try to you just need to understand why we are using firstly then we'll try to understand why and this are more than enough to get a job and aws services okay on rough note iam ec2 okay ec2 is just launching for 1 minute is not the course guys okay so if you try to see that that is not the one okay s3 okay ami okay uh, snapshot basic things all or all, all all these things what i am i'm trying to tell ebs efs okay and uh, still cloud watch cloud watch will not go we'll try to have prometheus let me ask after my class if you have any question prometheus grafana okay okay i'll try to write here so i guess this is not completed i guess ma'am as per the schedule uh, 
let me stop just a second Yeah, so this was the syllabus and this is not completed. Moni uh, monitoring with respect to Prometheus and Grafana. I'll try to tell ma'am to start this. Uh, okay, and I had given some of the checklist. Okay, to monitor. I don't know Gautam have joined or not. Okay. Mm, okay, Gautam have not joined. Let me... Okay, or else you after the things I'll try to tell. So these were all of the services. Load balances. Auto scaling. Okay, launch configuration. All these things comes together. DNS or Route 53. Okay, and uh, still we'll have <coughs> AWS organization. Ops work and uh, still what are all the cloud trial and all of this is something uh, it is secondary okay which is not needed so firstly I just want to tell why do you need all of this uh, all these uh, basic servers uh, basic services then we'll try to understand on a de detailed note why we are going with uh, uh, like in detail you can understand basically majority of the people were unable to tell why we are using this kind of uh, uh, the services and many other things okay top 53 i have written on efs yeah these were enough guys and still i'll try to add lot many things i don't want to add cloud formation and many other things as we are already you need to understand terraform here that is the reason okay so everyone should be it should be very clear everyone why we are using all of this so let me open See guys, it is it is a cycle actually. It is complete cycle. You, you will not stop all of your things. Things will be going on a separate note. So here you will be getting monitoring for monitoring. Okay, there will be two things actually for monitoring all of the things. What you will try to have application level logging you will be having. System level logging you will be having. For application level logging, what you will try to use? For application level logging, you will try to use Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, and uh, some app dynamics, I guess. Let me go. Just want to share this. Yeah, here you will be having all of this on a continuous node. This is
this is release it is continuous yes it is continuous this is uh, all of the deployment so deployment is nothing but you are where files all of these things where or whatever we call it as jar file end product end okay which is nothing but end one deployment there will be two phases guys which you need to understand on a clear note one is ci second is cd okay ci is for continuous integration continuous integration is nothing but till your var file is generated we will be calling it as ci okay you will be having three tier architecture what i believe you know okay web server app server databases till your var file is getting generated okay uh, like you need to clone it right you need to build it you need to you need to deploy it right till your build point once you get your artifact okay this artifact artifact is called as okay artifacts for this we'll try to use jfrog or nexus or s3 if it is in azure azure blobs okay these kind of things we'll try to and this product will be of okay this product is of uh, like this you will be getting with respect to var or jar or ear okay sorry var is nothing but web archives enterprise archives java archives okay so this is the final product you will okay. this is the so for example whenever something like you have server so let's say this is your web server This is your application layer, guys. This is your databases. So all of the logics will be there in between. Okay. This is in middle layer you will have, and this is for catch like RAM. Okay. Everywhere, all of the code need to be updated. Okay. Everywhere you try to understand. Okay. Whenever something there is a change with respect to your applications. Okay, it can be any application, e-commerce, banking, or anything. Your code need to be updated in all of those things. Okay, <clears throat> you your code need to be updated in all of these servers. Then only the new new people will be getting the new response. So let's say your application is upgraded from X to X plus one. So what you will try to do, you will try to have uh, this particular, there will be one more var file, okay, one more executable you can understand and tables they will modify guys. These tables automatically they will try to write MySQL and Redis, that is a different story. You try to understand some middleware at least as of now, okay, X plus one executable var files which need to be deployed, okay, manually compilation will be done manually uh, compilation cloning okay compilation or building whatever we call and you will try to get this var file and that var file you need to inject in all of the servers if you have something servers of one this is two this is three okay let's say uh, four servers in all of these four servers you need to deploy okay if you try to deploy only these two servers and if you left this okay only 50% of your uh, crowd will be getting the new particular response. So let's say I just want to have my Flipkart site, okay, with uh, some UI changes, okay. UI changes will be there. UI will be developed with respect to Angular and all of this. Okay, I had made some changes and that code is being updated only the, in these two servers. Totally, you have four servers, okay. And these two servers you are not getting. So then you need to update in all of the four uh, particular servers. You need to deploy your var file. Then only you will be getting all of this, all the response. Okay, or else 50% of the crowd. 
so this is the journey complete journey okay which the final agenda is to make some of the binary you need to understand this and which you need to deploy into all of this servers that's it guys nothing more than that for this what is the journey manually compilation you will try to do okay uh, you will try to clone it before that cloning comp uh, manually compiling manually and you will try to do so every time you know, you are trying to do manually all of these things so that is the reason you will try to integrate all of your things continuously okay everything will be going on a continuous node right this this operation will be going on continuous node this monitoring okay here you will be having here you will be having centralized logging system level logging okay centralized logging which you will be going with respect to elk guys elastic search log stash and kibana okay system level logging like system whenever something system resources are completely full with respect to cpu and all of these things you will go for logging for this you will have cloud watch okay cloud watch is something which need to be paid in this there will be something called default monitoring and detail monitoring default monitoring will be having for every 5 minutes okay and for every 1 minute if you want to monitor every 1 minute if you want to monitor what you will try to have you will try it for every 1 minute you will if you want to monitor you will try you need to pay this is not something okay which is free if you try to see default monitoring time Five minutes. It will be five minutes. Okay, for every one minute, what is going on in your server and all of these things. Okay, which every one minute, if you want to go, this is called detail monitoring. Whatever the logs you you are getting for every one minute, all of these things. So we'll try to go this for this this paid one. Okay. okay build one you will try to go with maven and We'll try to write this once again. Yes, there this is something. Oh, we are getting to itself. Not a problem, guys. I'll try to understand. So first, compiling, which is nothing but building, right? Which is nothing but building. It is something kind of continuous monitor. DevOps is something you will have. Okay, hell number of things. What I have discussed, you will try have all of your things. Okay, you will have all of your things. Something this is kind of release. Release in the sense here you will try to have minor and major, major releases. Okay, so here you will try to deploy. Deploy in the sense Ansible you can use the particular artifacts which you are trying to generate. Var files, jar files, er files, all of these things need to be deployed in all of the servers. Ansible you can use. And here as well, we'll try to have dynamic inventory. Okay, dynamic inventory, because 
whenever you are trying to do your deployment your ips get changed you know right your ips get changed ip changes uh like what i mean like new deployment in the sense new auto scaling group new ami okay auto, uh, auto scaling for this new servers new ips all of those things need to be done so for this what happens you will try to have a new ip in the sense new server in the sense in this new server all of your artifacts need to be kept okay you will be getting okay but uh, you will be getting servers via aws auto scale that is fine okay but you need to apply this auto scaling group uh, this you need to apply this server you need to apply this server uh, this particular var file okay into the uh, like into the particular what i mean into all of this server so let's say these were all of your servers and you are getting new two new servers and these two new servers need to deploy yeah you will try to deploy for every time you can't sell so let's say if you are getting 100 servers in this 100 servers you can't write ansible playbook as it is static just a second guys So this hundred servers will be having new server. So you will be getting new IP. So for this new servers, how you can't have Ansible playbook, right? Ansible playbook you can have inventory. That is fine. Inventory is something in etc. Ansible host is something. All the things you'll try to have, you'll try to have uh, like the particular group web servers, and you'll try to specify IPs here. But all of your IPs will be like new. You can you will try to add every time you some servers will be due to auto scaling it gets deleted. How you will try to manage? So that is the reason we use Ansible dynamic inventory. So it automatically fetches all of the things. Or you will have AWS commands. Okay, I'll try to tell AWS commands. How do you get? We used to do these kind of things. As this this is also you can tell as your responsibilities. Okay. So something hyphen hyphen AWS CLI commands you will have status is equal to running something you will try to have okay i'll try to tell all of those things at a later point but you try to understand this is something var file you'll try to deploy in all of the things okay that is your journey via ansible you'll try to deploy or you can use anything ansible you can use as a continuous deployment tool i i mean getting all of your artifacts from various things okay from s3 tries to pick s3 it tries to pick and it tries to put in all of your application servers application servers are nothing but this one okay okay it tries to put but uh, what happens there is something flaw okay from s3 or nexus or jfrog you need to put you will try to run some of the playbook deployment is nothing this one so deployment for deployment you will have approvals we will have pr okay pr is nothing but pull request but on rough note you understand all of this okay and operating is nothing but maintenance guys whether the particular things are going uh, fine so application maintenance whenever you are trying to have okay your particular flipkart application in live okay that is fine but that application will be getting an error so that one you need to go ahead and for this monitor monitoring centralized logging you will have i told and system level monitoring system level will be helpful with respect to all the tools called nagios sorry guys my handwriting is a bit bad i am unable to write but try to adjust nagios zabbix prometheus etc okay Centralized logging, you can have Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. So this is for something called 500 errors. Okay, 5xx you can consider. And this is something 1 to 400 errors. Right? 
whenever what is going on, you will be getting errors like right four not four, five not two. This this is something bad gateway, right? You will be getting, and this is something test testing team will be in, included. Okay, testing team you will have. Okay. Test lead, and you will try to do some of the functional testing. What is your behavior of your application? Okay, so all of your functions are being observed. Okay, so like let's say add to cart, fifty products you need to add. Or is this adding or not on a correct note? Like payment acceptance is going or not? Redirecting to bank or all of these things. Functional testing you will have. Okay, you will try to have smoke testing on rough note. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you will have regression, black box. Okay, all of these things will be included. Okay, load testing, performance, load runner will be there. Okay, performance testing or anything. So for this, and you will try to have build tools, Maven, and Gradle. Let me take other things so that. Oh. Gradle. These kind of things you will try to use. This is for Java guys. You will have a dependency file called form.xml. That developer will give you no need to worry. So depending upon your backend technology, you will have. Okay, if our Node.js, you will have npm or yarn, and your build tool is something this one, and your dependency file will be. Package dot JSON and for Python, your build tool would be pip, which is nothing called as package manager, and your dependency file is requirement dot txt. Okay. <clears throat> and this is something code which will be developer will be writing all of those okay you no need to worry okay and this is something requirement gathering and after that planning okay sprints will be included at what time you need to have all of these things sprints and scrum calls okay for a huge requirement you'll try to divide into small things and you'll try to divide your requirement so let's say that you have a huge requirement of uh, something uh, that you want to have upgraded version via face lock face face itself is seeing that your unlock should happen okay this is something for banking of sbi so this is something huge requirement everyone works on this particular small things as a microservice okay as something okay or and let me not include microservice everyone will start working on all of this so they'll try to keep some of the days okay they'll try to have some sprint okay uh, sprints of uh, something 12 are required okay 12 sprints are required so each sprint will be having 30 days it depends uh, this, this one will be depending upon your organization guys each day you need to tell your report okay 30 into 12 so something they had given 
sum of the 12 threes, 36, 360 days, right? On rough note, this is a complete uh, like require uh, these many days they were taking on daily note, they'll try to increase, they'll try to increase some code, they'll try to, and they'll try to update their code repository. This one is called as developer, okay, developer work. They'll try to do. And here we'll try to have branches and different things. Okay, that is a different story. I'm not going in detail, but this is how you'll, this, all these things will be continuously will be going on. Continuous testing will be happening on a rigorous note, continuous monitoring every time they'll monitor. Continuous operations will be going on. Okay, minor releases, major releases, and all of these things. Okay, operation in the sense if any of the service is down or whatever, I mean maintenance activities on rough note. If any of the hardware gets failure, okay, all the things will be under coming under operation. If something server is full, so whenever server is full, guys, okay, easy to so let's say let's say it is a virtual per or else you have an on-prem server and then there is huge load or there is something no AC which is not having, okay, then that is or huge number of loads we are getting. So so whenever you have something scooty, okay, I don't know. So I don't know about spelling. I, I forgot. Like, yeah. Or else let me write. Bike you have. And for this bike, it is something only 150 cc. So if two people were there, that is fine. And if four people were sitting on that, huge people, it will work. But performance will be done. B. Okay. A server also. If there is something 500 hits per second, and if you are suddenly expecting 1000 hits per second, your server performance will be weak. Your server performance will be, it will be weak. Okay. So for the existing 500 people also, it will not give response. So that's how it will work. Okay. So existing server as well will not give the response. So operations will be going on. Operations are nothing but, so like huge load you are getting something or you need to change the AC of your server's rack. Okay, something blade server which you need to replace. Something like servers will be like this, right, in offices. Okay, all of these servers. I guess you are aware of server room and everything. Okay, this is how your server room will be. Try to take this. So, this is server room, guys. So, something has failed. You need to take the approval, and if it is something on prem, okay, on prem in the sense you are maintaining. Something cloud is nothing but AWS. So these are called as operations work. Operations or maintenance. So you need to replace the server. So huge requests, so huge TPS you are getting. When the server capability is something four CPUs, it is something and 16 or 8 GB of RAM. If you are trying to have access beyond, like if you are trying to uh, trouble some uh, number by giving number of it or doing some of the operation, your hardware gets failed. Hardware hardware gets failed it can repair or don't know okay you need to take into the shop and you should show it to the shop in the shop okay hardware failure will happen so in even in if it is these were called as maintenance activities or operations on rough note you can have so you should not hit like that you should increase a server count or you should make some of the free Okay, server free, okay, CPU, disk, and all of this thing. That is journey, okay? Like you need to maintain proper CPU. <laughs> so yesterday I have told, right? How <laughs> like if there... How do you do? Uh, how do you check? Monica is not there. Okay, Surya Prakash, what is the command that you will try to use and kill some of the things? Okay. CPU when load is full. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, so you check us yesterday itself. I have told right. How do you check? How do you clear RAM? How do you 
clear some of the CPU, all of these things? How do you clear some of the disk spaces? Kill hyphen nine. Kill hyphen nine, and which one you will try to kill? Process ID. Which process ID? Whichever is using a huge RAM. How do you know that? Uh, using top command. Yeah, using top command, that is fine. But if it is something production, first top command you will try to see and kill it. No. Okay. No. First, try to have task manager. If you try to see, there is something consistent thing. Windows server, you will definitely have performance heavily. Okay, 53% of my CPU is used. Okay, 48 if I try to run it. But CPU will be every process, every process, whenever you are trying to, okay, every process will consume some of the things. Okay, will consume some CPU, some RAM, some network, Okay, some desk. All these things are needed in order to execute a process. So let's say you are ordering, like you are, <clears throat> you are ordering some of the, like it is something process. Okay, who is taking initiative? Some process, everything will be there. It is something system D in Linux. Okay. Uh, system D, who is an initiative? Like I had given, like at Zomato, you had ordered. Okay some food okay who is the first responsible to take this order something office person like who is maintaining that hotel let's consider it is me and i will take this order shankar for me i'll be getting an alert in mobile or something like i have got an order so i will be the first person system d is the first person who takes the initiative of all of that and i'll try to give i can't i need to manage some of the people like who is cooking who is chef and many other things i need to maintain some of the things office works okay for that particular my kitchen i need to check some of the stove and many other things okay so i'll try to tell each and everyone some per uh, like to do some work and this particular like i'll try to after preparation i need to have a delivery boy right delivery boy to deliver my food uh, uh, the food to him okay for this delivery boy i'll try to give fuel Okay, I'll try to uh, money for fuel. I'll try to have some bike for him. So I'll try to give some. These were all called as resources. In order to execute my process, and what is my process? This is delivering of all of my things as is my process. Okay, so uh, like let's say I like all of these things. Like fuel is something like you can assume as a CPU. Okay, and RAM is nothing but as a bike you can assume. Okay. X, Y, Z, okay, you can give uh, all number for my, uh, some, like I, I'll try to give some helmet. I'll try to give some money, okay, uh, to fill the air. So these were like, you can assume these were some of the resources in order to, which will be given to that particular process. Process is something. Now, this is the process which need to be, de the delivery is my process. Okay. So this need to be delivered and, uh, the process is something, yeah, this is, so, but on a sudden note, like, say, let's say zombie process will be there. So I had given this, this work to him. Okay. But it got failed. The particular tire got punctured and he is not delivered. So I had delegated the same work. He called me and he explained me the scenario via phone. And he told, okay, I allocated the same thing to another delivery boy second delivery boy will be coming into the play. So again, I need to give the same thing, same things to him, whatever I had given, right? All the resources, bike, everything. And I had invested some money, right? On this particular first person. Okay. Delivery, I had invest, invested some money. All my things, okay, CPU here as well. Okay, but it got failed. So all of the resources will be there with him. I need to take back, right? Because he had not done work completely. Yeah, 
as you have done some work i'll i will not give only 10% of the things i i'll try to give because already i told you to fill some mere and go but you have not done due to the same reason itself it got failed and i'll try to give and i'll try to tell him and 50% of the work or 30% of the money itself i'll try to give okay and i'll try to collect the 7 70 rest of the things to me uh, i'll hand over the money to me okay similarly this process whenever you are not taking back this resources he let's say he got uh, somewhere stuck in some of the forest okay while it is a kind of forest area i had given and he is not having any particular repair shop anything this is stuck okay it got stuck and it is nothing okay resources that you had given but it is a failure you are not having delivery process is not been executed so something another thing you will try to give and you will try to deliver so this process this particular other the first person delivery uh, should be the resources whatever you are giving is been kept under this process but this process is not executed now this process need to be uh, killed okay then only your resources whatever you are trying to give okay then only your hardware again it tries to capture your main cpu will be getting the resources whenever whenever you are you had g- given some of the things initially at some time to do some of the task but this cpu is not cap- uh, this cpu whatever is given it should be given back or else it is something it is consuming but it is waste this process is called zombie process so some of the things which are already failed due to some or the other issue and resources are not utilized resources are not utilized okay so what you will try to do resources are not utilized so then you should make use of the resources so you need to kill the process okay first you will try to check ps hyphen ef and grab i'll try to how do you check some of the process which are consuming i'll try to okay zombie something kill how do you do this you will try to use ps okay ps hyphen es and you will try to use some pipe and grab and defunct and you will be getting some process ids pid you will be getting and you will try to use the command call kill on a forceful note you can clear uh, kill this because this are something whenever you are trying to execute this command the non executable i mean uh, the process which are utilizing but it is having no use the zombie process itself you will be getting this here. if you have i mean kill hyphen 9 and pid what you are getting this you need to give here and it will be done some of your cpus things will be resolved and next you can check top command and many other things i'll try it. and uh, if if there is ram ram full how do you check this and if there is something uh, like cache how do you clear uh, like what is the command to clear ram or cache whenever it is full echo okay what is the command uh, whenever something disk were full surya prakash what is that command monica what is the command whenever you have you are having a disk full okay first thing what you will try to check first you will try to analyze you will try to keep only 6 months logs what i have told okay some 6 months or 1 year before that you will try to delete okay you will try to run a command you will not try to delete truncate yesterday i have told right truncate okay hyphen s what is that hyphen s stands for hyphen s stands for am i audible yes loud and clear yes for hyphen f 
S hyphen S hyphen S. Surya Prakash, Monica. So this is also one command which you can take. Okay, all of the logs you can redirect to this particular file. Redirect to slash dev and it is a virtual file system where it consumes very minimal things. Okay, I mean a zero, zero itself. We will not try to have any particular thing. Okay, these were all of the commands. See, this command, I tried a uh, hell number of times. We use this command. Okay, it will try to make the size as zero. Okay, it will try to make S stand for, what does S stand for? You can increase or decrease, you can say this, you can check these things, all these things, this, uh, and after that, how do you attach? How do you attach as well, you can tell, okay? We used to make partitions, we used to make file systems, MKFS, and we used to have some of the things, okay? And after that, we used to have some of the mounting and we used to make entries in ETCFS tab. All of these things you can tell. As your rules and response, we used to manage all of these things. We used to manage some of the user level, network level, all these things, process level management, troubleshooting, server configuration, all of these things you can tell. Network uh, commands like SS. All I have told, right? Net start, I told yesterday, and uh, some of the commands IPR, okay? And if config host name hyphen I, capital I, right? Uh, all these things you can have. And uh, we used to manage initially, if you have five years, you can tell, like I had worked up approximately 1.5 years into this or two years as a Linux, but I did not remember all of the things in detail, but I have a rough idea. On rough note, they will ask. You can tell on rough note. Okay, I want you to see all of this, guys. Whenever something there is a load, okay, try to increase the load of that server. How do you increase? You can check. M install stress hyphen y and try to give the load to your server. Okay. How you, uh, I want everything. How do you resolve? Because the major journey itself revolves around this itself, guys. Once your application CICD is there, maintenance activities will be there. Complete maintenance, all of your CICD will be there. All of your CICD will be there completely. You can spin it up, all of your infra, everything. On daily basis, you need to monitor. Daily basis, some alerts you'll be getting, some server down, some issues you'll be getting, okay? What, what is that particular thing which you need to resolve, okay? They will uh, request you, I want some server, okay? And you will you will have all of these uh, scripts already. So how do you get servers? Server 1, server 2, server 3. If you want three servers, you will have Terraform modules directly, okay? I told you to write Terraform modules. I, do, I know that you all don't know uh, Terraform classes were not over, but I had given some of the tasks to provision all of your things. Okay, we'll try to run, uh, ma'am will be explaining for sure. Okay, EC2 with the modules, VPC, bare minimum, all these things you should know on a manual note. Okay, S3, IAM, I did, I have one of the interview, I, I guess I did not close that. And they had asked some of the Terraform script, which can have uh, IAM or CloudWatch, I did not remember. Okay, exactly. Okay. So all of this infra you will be getting via Terraform. For Terraform, you can go ahead or cloud formation templates, which is restricted to AWS. Terraform can work with respect to Azure, GCP or anything. Why do we use Terraform? If they ask, you should be able to tell. Okay. Why do we use it? We use this for multi-cloud environment. This supports multi-cloud environment servers on a huge node not only servers don't say i can provision ec2 or vms in azure we can provision resources what is the difference between resource and uh, like uh, service service is something which is being offered to you 
via cloud vendor by cloud vendor and resource what you are trying to provision is called as resource so via terraform we can have multiple resources we can launch at a go it can be any cloud environment that is not at all a problem we can go ahead and use all of these things via uh, terraform you can say if you want something we do have hell number of features and then then they will try to dig how if you lose your state file what you do if you what is difference between kubernetes taint or terraform taint and these kind of things they will try to check and they'll, uh, they'll ask you a detail but initially you should tell that I, I had worked on ansible these kind of things all of these things ansible playbooks i have written so install to on a con for continuous deployment we are using for ansible ansible try to inject all of my var files here okay ansible and uh, uh, this for all these servers we will try to maintain some monitoring which you can go ahead by we are going with respect to prometheus okay so here the main file what i have told yesterday you will have prometheus.yam Around 10 to 12, uh, 10 metrics to 12 metrics, you can go ahead. And I had given already uh, some what we used to monitor in our company. Okay, all the checklist, Excel list that I had shared uh, with some of the people. I don't know how many have monitored, but yeah. So uh, you can do R&D on this, this, this. Okay, disk spaces and CPU as well. How do you go ahead and check it? And Ansible, you'll try to go ahead for continuous deployment, guys. Var file, Ansible, I'm writing. You try to tell on a clear note, okay? Var file, because uh, everything will not be done via by me itself. So if if you if you have some decent skill, so automatically you will be able, like let's say some decent company uh, like came, if you have 50% knowledge, some or the other way we can do and you will be able to get into that and these companies if you try to say i'll try to have this much of fun to you this will not be uh, this will be not a possible case for such companies okay ansible you can use con continuous deployment tool i mean for var and as an automation engine automation engine in order to convert all of your uh, automation scraps okay automation jobs you will be having here okay automation jobs you will be like converting all of your shell scripts and many of the things automation jobs you can do use ansible as an automation job you can use as a continuous deployment tool uh, automation you can tell i can use shell scripts or python and many other things but this provides side importance if you try to execute once or 100 times you'll be getting the same result as we all know, okay, who all know Ansible, okay. And uh, this is something and Ansible you can use continuous deployment, okay, automation jobs. Continuous deployment, uh, automating uh, for automate uh, and uh, configuration management whenever you want to inject some of the things and for infra as well we'll try to use for infra as well but we'll try to use terraform okay in order to get all of the things and in order to store all of your var files artifacts what you'll try to use jfrog guys jfrog or s3 or you can tell nexus and we are you try to have simple playbook okay you try to write which tries to take all of your things ansible playbook okay which automatically takes all of your var file from s3 okay s3 tries to take and it tries to put in all of your application servers and this these all of your application should be spinned up by terraform modules and your artifact should be spin uh, artifact should be taken your var file need to be de uh, deployed into all of your servers a var file from uh, like once you execute this playbook and i'll try to show you can how you can use automation and for this you need to know uh, some basic things of how you can customize vs code 
and you will have some of the plugins, chat GPT and many other things. Okay. You no need to write from the scratch. Okay. Open. I'll try to say, okay. Okay. Black box AI. Okay. You can write here direct. You can open Chrome or something. Ansible. Playbook. For taking our Ansible playbook for installing Tomcat. I had given this assignment, right? Installing Tomcat directly, step by step. So these were all of the manual steps. Oh, Ansible Tomcat I have not written. The automated process of installing Tomcat using, okay, first Ansible installation it is giving, okay. And then there, this is something update catchy. You need to have Java and you need to download some of the, oh, where it is. You need to, you no need to understand everything. Basic structure, you need to understand. So this is something download, right? So something I'll try to paste here. Okay, so something it is extracting download one remote SRC destination copying this uh, noti uh, uh, like notify handlers. Okay, so on rough note, you can have all of the things and you can have a playbook Ansible playbook directly. For hmm, connecting to English is mandatory, guys. Connecting to S3 and pulling. <clears throat> Artifact. And deploying. Over Tomcat servers. With dynamic inventory. Because server IPs get changed, right? This particular complete script will help you out in order to install automatically. Once you spin up, Tomcat service will be up and guys. If you will try to see home page, you try to test it. And if there is some, some or the other things which is getting failed, you need to fix it. Basic Linux uh, skill is um, uh, more than enough. Right, these were all of the steps. Okay, these were all of the steps. So it is telling, trying to tell you all the things, right, in detail. Uh, some or the other way you need to, we'll try to have a hell number of tools. I'll try to tell how you can have uh, uh, at a later point where is chat GPT for, for free how you can install all of the things and a uh, lot many around 10 to 15 AI tools will try to understand but you try manual first you try to do all of the things and then once you know only manual things like how the things working here and there then you can correct if there are some issues so this is something artifact restored way okay and I'll try to tell, okay, Docker, why we are using. So similarly, first of all, you'll try to have VM. And VM on top of VM, you'll try to have app server. This is called as uh, uh, like hardware. And you're on top of your hardware, you'll try to have your OS. And top of your things, you'll try to have libraries or binaries. And on top of this, you'll try to run your application. So, but whenever you want to have in detail, okay, 
what happens instead of uh, for each server you need one micro for one micro service you need one server why micro service and all of these things ma'am have already explained i guess in the day one class itself it is very clear and you can watch uh, once again if you have doubts you can ask me but i'm i'll try to put some like that set okay oh yes here you will try to have hypervisor on top of your hypervisor you will try to have all of your things okay uh, you will try to have uh, libraries actually okay okay whatever it might be you can container runtime in uh, hypervisor you will try to have so hypervisor what it will try to do you will try to divide your hardware 4gb 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 something so whenever you want to have complete things it will try to resource level optimization which is which will be happened in docker you need to say whenever they ask in interview guys what you need to say whenever there is something huge thing okay which is happening Uh, like with respect to cp and resources and all of these things for these kind of things resource level optimization on a main node resource level optimization and it is very speed okay it is within a blink of your eye your container will be up and all of these things you can search uh, pros and cons in of docker directly you will be getting why docker is working on what basis c groups it works okay you can check okay c groups name spaces okay and process ids all these things pid okay why are these concept your docker works traditional linux concept okay you can check and why do we need kubernetes kubernetes is something orchestration tool guys orchestration so whenever these containers go down okay go down at any point you need some or the other tools in order to orchestrate all of your things so for that we have docker swarm okay docker swarm which is a proprietary or you will be having some uh, like you will be having kubernetes okay why it is only kubernetes guys it is something from k to 8 you have k to kubernetes you will have eight characters okay that is the reason you can check eight will be there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 right so many of the people don't know on rough note i have told and you will have kubernetes and it is mostly widely used as it is a google product initially it was a google product and after that it has been sold to cncf cloud found uh, cloud native foundation okay now it is the uh, it is the one who is owning this product and it it uh, because you you will know you, whenever this goes down you can't run docker run hyphen itd multiple times right or you need to watch watch command why do we use watch command guys in linux why do we use watch in order to monitor what is on watch command in line okay automatically it give great so something in order to you can't watch everything watch hyphen n and you can't do all of this things if something goes down again you need to docker run hyphen itd and all of your name of the image okay right name of the image you can't give continuously and run all of your things okay and uh, like directly name you will try to give nginx and something if something goes down again you need to watch continuously in separate window you will try to keep for this and continuously if something goes wrong again you need to if something like docker usually goes down the tendency is something it is it, because it takes very minimal amount and it works on an isolated node and it tries to take very minimal resources right it will it the tendency or uh, is very high to go down right the tendency is very high to go down so that is the reason docker which is docker swarm which is docker company okay kubernetes which is google and cn or apache mesos from apache company or nomad someone have got an opening with respect to nomad i did not remember i guess shashank for deloitte company nomad which is a hashicorp company terraform company you just need uh, you can have on rough note okay people uh, nomad 
company which is of okay nomad uh, orchestra not company orchestration nomad tool you can give okay hashicorp right so you will have different uh, things and uh, i'll try to share this to everyone and we'll try to connect tomorrow guys actually uh, i'll try to we'll try to give the assignments on a daily note this assignment i'll try to show you uh, provisioning of all of the servers via terraform okay or i i guess you all don't know terraform why to confuse or ansible script i'll try to write ansible in order to install tomcat okay and we'll have some of the sample application which we'll try to call it as var file and we'll try to install on tomcat and we'll try to start and uh, sorry guys today ma'am is not available like ssl certificate with respect to domain name ma'am will try to show you tomorrow and uh, yeah on daily basis tomorrow for sure we'll try to take on daily not one or two interviews you'll get you'll fail guys not a problem you no need to worry about that all those things that is not at all a very big deal uh, uh guys you are able to understand actually what i'm trying to tell i just want to tell why we are using the tool actually some of major many of the people were not understanding why we are using the tool that is that is the only reason Guys, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Are you able to understand? Yes, sir. May I know, like, who is this? Uh, is it me or... Why Shankar is there? Joined us with it. Who is this? Let me stop recording. I guess it is not recording. Okay.